good afternoon we will discuss today uh, you know a few problems which are related to internal combustion engine and if we try to recall that we have discussed uh, different modules which are important for the internal combustion engine operation starting from the engine classification uh, different cycles their you know uh, representation i mean representation of different processes in the thermodynamic plane then we have discussed about carburation then we have discussed about the combustion of si and ci engines and finally we have discussed about you know uh, internal combustion you know different modes of heat transfer rather heat distribution inside the cylinder and finally the cooling system so to start with today we will discuss a few problems the first pro problem we will discuss about the carburation so we will discuss about the carburation we will take up one example from this module and we will try to see you know uh, how we can really if you need to design the carburetor then what are the different aspects and the mathematical uh, mathematical uh, you know uh, problem uh, state in mathematical statement and as well as the you know solution process through which we can really calculate the first problem i will write that number 1 that one venturi of a simple float type carburetor and the diameter of venturi is you know 2 centimeter the fuel nozzle uh, is 5 millimeter that is tip of the fuel nozzle it is given CDA 0 0.85 density of the air is 1.3 kg per meter cube and density of fuel is 750 kg per meter cube. We need to calculate the minimum velocity of air. required to start the fuel flow and we can consider or assume air to be incompressible. So, this is the problem statement that we need to calculate the minimum velocity of which is required to start the air flow. If we try to recall that a simple float type carburetor the concept is there will be a venturi and as the air flow approach the you know the air flow approaches the venturi then there will be a drop in velocity a drop in pressure and increment to the flow in flow velocity. A drop in pressure is now create a pressure difference between the section that is between the venturi and the top of the fuel uh, chamber and this pressure difference is the driving driving force for which is required rather this is the driving force for the flow of fuel from the fuel chamber into the venturi through the you know fuel discharge tube. Now diameter of the venturi is given 2 centimeter fuel nozzle the fuel nozzle tip is given 5 millimeter diameter cda is given density of the air is given density of the fuel is also important that is also given and we can consider air to be an incompressible fluid so now we will try to solve the problem solution so what will be the solution for that we need to draw the schematic again 
So, if we draw the schematic, so this is the venturi. and this is the fuel chamber. So, this is the fuel and the float chamber sorry this is the float, cham float chamber. This is the air vent and this is fuel. So, this is the fuel level and this is the air is coming and you will get air, air plus fuel mixture. This is only air. Now, if we try to solve here uh, this Tip of the fuel nozzle is 5 millimeters. So, this H, this H is equal to 5 millimeter that is given, and this is section 1 1 and this is section 2 2. Air, you know, flow is incompressible. If we apply bond location between section 1 and section 2, 2 we can write that you know P 1 by rho A plus velocity is almost equal to 0, almost 0 equal to P 2 by rho A plus V 2 square by 2 and we can calculate V 2. So, V 1 is much much less than V 2 that is why we can ignore V 1. So, V 2 will be equal to under root 2 into P 1 minus P 2 divided by rho A and P 1 is P atmospheric and P 1 minus P 2 that is delta P that is nothing but rho G into delta H that is rho fuel. So, we can calculate V 2 is nothing but twice into you know uh, 750 twice into I can write P 1 minus P 2 that is rho f into G into delta H divided by rho A. So, that is twice into 750 into 9.81 into 5.10 power minus 3 divided by 1.3 this is under root and if we calculate it we will get 7.56 meter per second. So, this is the velocity. So, this is the minimum velocity required for the you know to start the flow of fuel. So, this P 1 minus P 2 because why P 1 minus P 2 is equal to delta P here also we are having atmospheric pressure. So, P 1 is equal to P A T M here also we are having P ATM. So, this P 1 minus P 2 is nothing but delta P that is the pressure difference which is required which is required for the onset of flow of fuel and that is nothing but rho f into g into h. So, we need to only overcome the height difference that is the onset of flow. If we can overcome the static height difference then so the driving force required to overcome the static height difference only then flow can initiate. So, this is the minimum velocity of this is the minimum velocity of air is equal. So, this is 7.56 meter per second. Okay. Next we will work out another problem where discussing the problem of engine performance. Problem engine 
performance. So, the first problem we can solve a 4 stroke cycle CI engine. Four stroke CI engine has brake thermal efficiency, brake thermal efficiency equal to 32 percent and lower heat value of the fuel. So, heat value of fuel. 41,200 kilojoule per kg. We have to calculate brake specific fuel consumption and break mean effective pressure of the engine if volumetric efficiency is 76 percent and inlet density of charge is 1.05 kg per meter cube and fuel air ratio is equal to 0 0.04. So, this is the problem. So, we have to solve that solution. So, this is the problem a 4 stroke cycle CI engine, the engine is having brake thermal efficiency 32 percent, lower heat value of the fuel is 41,200 kilojoule per kg. We need to calculate brake specific fuel consumption, the definition of BSFC we have you know discussed that is BSFC and the brake mean effective pressure BMEP and that is also we have discussed that is BMEP of the engine if the volumetric efficiency is 76 percent and inlet density of the charge is 1 point, you know, 0 0 0 0.5, 1.05 kg per meter cube and fuel air ratio is 0 0.04. So, it is given eta brake thermal that is 32 percent and heating value. So, uh, heating value of the fuel Forty one thousand two hundred kilojoule per kg, volumetric efficiency that is seventy six percent, and rho charge that is one point zero five kg per meter cube, and fuel by air that is zero point zero four. So, these are the information given. So, we have to solve this problem. Now, if we try to recall what is brake specific fuel consumption B S F C that is M dot F divided by W B. That means, this is nothing but rate of fuel flow into the engine divided by brake power right. So, that means, this is nothing but 1 by eta thermal into lower heat value of the fuel. W B by M dot F that is the you know 
uh, that is the brake thermal efficiency that is given that is brake thermal efficiency W B by M dot M F that is not the brake thermal efficiency into heating value of the fuel into heating value equal to eta brake thermal. So, W by m dot f that is nothing but, so I can write m dot f by w dot b that is you know 1 upon heating value into eta, eta thermal. So, now we can calculate easily that is 1 upon 0 0.32 into 41200 and we will get 7.58 into 10 power minus 5 kg per kilo joule that is nothing but if we convert we will get 0 0.2 kg per bhp hour that is the BSFC. Second part that we have to calculate brake, brake mean effective pressure. So, this is the BSFC that is brake specific fuel consumptions. So, next is how can we calculate in the brake mean effective pressure. Now, BM E P that is the brake mean effective pressure. So, we know that volumetric efficiency eta V that is m dot a divided by rho a into V B D C right and we got m dot f divided by w b that is 7.5 uh, this is that is what we have get uh, obtained eta v. Therefore, m dot a divided by v b d c that is nothing but eta v into rho a that is what we can write from this expression that is the but that is the definition of the volume at, you know. Uh, that is the definition of volumetric efficiency. Right. Therefore, m dot f by m dot a that is nothing but we also can write that m dot right. m dot f by w b that is b s f c and that is nothing but 7.58 into 10 power minus 5 kg per kilo joule. So, m dot f by m dot b that we can calculate that is what we have to calculate now that we can write that is nothing but. So, this is uh, we can write 7.58 into 10 power minus 5 divided by 0 0.76 into 1.05. So, that means, if we divided this if this is equation if this is equation 2 and this is equation 1 and if we divided 2 divided by 1 we get like this that m dot f by w b v b d c break work. So, we can write this expression. Now, brake mean effective pressure that is W brake divided by V B D C and that is nothing but that is nothing but 0 0.04 that is given fuel air ratio. into uh, 
into 0 0.76 into 1.05 divided by 7.58 into 10 power minus 5 and uh, that is the mean effective pressure. Therefore, break mean that will be equal to 0 0.42 MPa. So, this is the case. So, that means from the volumetric efficiency m dot a by v b d c that is eta v into rho a that is what we have you know uh, inlet density of the charge that means the we can consider that is 1.05 and if we divided 2 by 1 this equation is 2 that is uh, m dot b by w dot b that we are getting from this equation and if we divide by 2 by 1 that we can write m dot f by m dot a that is nothing but 7.58 into 10 power minus 5 divided by 0.76 into 1.05 eta volumetric is eta volumetric is so this eta v 0 0.76 and this is 1.05 so that is what we have done now this if we do this we will get m dot f by m dot p that is also given 0 0.04. So, we can relate what will be the break work by V B D C that is the break mean effective pressure that is 0 0.42 MPa. So, this is the first one. We also can solve another one problem. So, why we have calculated this quantity because this quantity is nothing but 0 0.04 that we have that is what is given. Now, if we divide 2 by 1 we will can write the W B by V B D C in terms of m dot f by m dot a and also we will get some other term. So, we can write this quantity. So, next problem will go that is another problem that of another problem that is engine performance. That is four cylinder two stroke SI, SI engine, four cylinder four stroke SI engine, bore is given, bore is 6.5 centimeter, stroke length is also given 9.5 centimeter, speed n is given 3000 rpm clearance volume that is 65 centimeter cube relative efficiency based on brake thermal this is based on brake thermal that is 50 percent heating value of the fuel that is 11000 kilo calorie per kg. Now, when tested on load it developed it developed 7 kg force meter torque determine the specific fuel consumption and break mean effective pressure. So, these are the quantities we have to calculate. So, I mean we have to calculate two quantity that means uh, that is two quantities that is the uh, specific fuel consumption and the break mean effective pressure. So, everything is given. Now, if we start solving the problem this is solution non torque is given.
torque is given 7.5 sorry 7 kg force meter that is uh, torque is given 7 kg force meter So, torque is given 75 kg force meter that is 7, 750 Newton meter. Now, brake power that is twice pi n t. So, this is the quantity torque t divided by 60. So, you can calculate easily twice into pi into 3000 into torque is 750 divided by 60 and that is into 10 cube. Of course, you have to multiply for the uh, adjustment of the uh, unit and we will get twice 3 5.61 kilowatt. So, this is the brake work. Now, if we know the brake work then brake mean effective pressure. that is the brake power and the engine is having you know into 2 4 stroke engine there will be 2 revolution per cycle divided by area into length into n into number of cylinder. So, we can write 235.61 into 2 into 10 cube into 4 into 60 uh, into uh, like this. If you go to the previous slide kilowatt, so watt area that is pi by 4 into 0 0.065 the square into 9.5 into 10 power minus 2 into 3000 into number of cylinder 4 and uh, number of cylinder is 4 that is given 4 cylinder 3000 rpm and we can write in terms of bar and then we can write 74.74 bar. So, this will be the you know uh, case that what will be the brake mean effective pressure. Now, brake mean brake mean effective pressure that is given, but we have to calculate the BSFC. So, now M dot F is SFC into brake power and therefore, SFC that is M dot F divided by brake power and M dot F that is the you know uh, M dot F is 53.48 divided by brake power that is 235.61 and we can calculate that is 0 0.227 kg per bhp hour. So, this is the specific fuel consumption. So, uh, if we go to the you know previous slide then determine the specific fuel consumption not the brake specific consumption, but brake mean effective pressure and that is the case. So, we can calculate m dot f. Now, m dot f we have to calculate m dot f uh, that is relative efficiency brake thermal efficiency. So, from brake thermal efficiency we 
we can calculate m dot f and that is 53.485. So, from this we can calculate mass flow rate of the fuel and from there we can calculate what is the specific fuel consumption. So, this is another problem. Next we will solve another uh, problem that is problem of CI engine fuel injection. Next is problem on CI engine fuel injection. Problem is very simple problem a single cylinder 4 stroke CI engine single cylinder 4 stroke CI engine uses 2.2 kg of fuel per hour. Engine RPM is 650 density of fuel is 875 kg per meter cube injection period is 28 degree of crank travel now if the average injection pressure that is very important is 14.7 mega Pascal and charge and the charge pressure during injection is and the charge pressure is 3.14 mega Pascal calculate the diameter of fuel orifice. It is given that discharge coefficient of the orifice is 0.88. So, this is given. So, this is we have to solve a single cylinder 4 stroke CI engine uses 2.2 kg of fuel per hour, RPM is given, density of the fuel is given 875 kg per meter cube, injection period is 28 degree of the crank travel. If the average injection pressure is 14.7 MPa and the charge pressure during injection is 3.14 MPa calculate the density of the we have to calculate the density of the fuel orifice and where the CD you know coefficient of the discharge coefficient of the orifice that is given 0.88. So, we have to solve this problem if we solve this solution that that is 65 revolution in 1 minute that means, one revolution in 1 by 65 minute. Now, 360 degree rotation of the crank in 1 by 650 sec 650 second uh, sorry a uh, minute equal to 60 by 650 second. Therefore, 28 degree rotation equal to 60 into 28 divided by 650 into 360 that is uh, atho second right. So, uh, now it is given that 
in the problem if we go back it is given that 2.2 kg of fuel per hour. So, that means 300 zero second the engine uses 2.2 kg of fuel. Therefore, for 28 degree that is what is given 28 degree of the crank travel for 28 degree the crank travel time that we have calculated this is like this and this is uh, the, uh, the that is for 28 degree crank travel time required is we have uh, calculated time required for 28 degree crank travel we have calculated now for 28 degree crank travel we can calculate the amount of fuel injected fuel injected will be equal to 2.2 divided by 3600 into 60 into 28 divided by 650 into 360 and that is 4.38 into 10 power minus 6 kg of fuel right that is what you have calculated. Next is then mass flow rate of fuel that is rho f into area of the fuel orifice and velocity of the fuel into C d. And therefore, where V f will be equal to if we try to calculate the first problem that is 2 into 14.7 minus 3.14 divided by 875 into 10 power 6 and that is 162.5 meter per second that is the velocity of the fuel. Velocity of fuel that means, if we now try to calculate mass of fuel per cycle. So, that means, per cycle how much uh, what is the mass of fuel being injected. So, velocity of the fuel you have calculated and this amount of fuel will be supplied for 28 degree of the crank rotation. Therefore, we can calculate the mass of the fuel per cycle that will be equal to 7.179 into 10 power minus 3 second. This is for the 28 degree opening for one cycle into 0 0.88 into 875 into 162.5 into a f that is what we have calculated right. If we now calculate the mass of fuel per cycle that is how much. So, we can calculate that is 2 point. So, that means, if we equate this quantity that is nothing but 2.2 2 by 3600, but it is now having single cylinder 4 stroke CI engine. That means, there will be 2 revolution per cycle and that is that is into 60 into 2 divided by 650 and this is the one cycle. So, this is the one cycle. So, this if this quantity is equated with this quantity then from there we can we will get diameter of the orifice that will be equal to 0 0.344 3 sorry 3 9 millimeter that is equal to 0 0.4 millimeter. So, the mass of fuel per cycle there will, there will be 2 revolution per cycle in the time. So, that is what we have calculated that one cycle that is what is the kg of fuel. So, this is this is the you know you know I can say uh, one cycle 
this is the kg of fuel. So, kg of fuel per 1 cycle. So, this is kg of fuel in 1 cycle. Right? Since we have 2 revolution per cycle. So, this is what we have calculated what will be the diameter of the fuel uh, you know uh, diameter of the fuel orifice. Next we will work out one you know small example small problem on the air fuel ratio and that is what is very important. Next last problem that will work out on the air fuel ratio. So, last problem problem on the air fuel ratio. So, uh, problem is a hydrocarbon fuel is expressed as C x h y. We need to write the stoichiometric equation. Stoichiometric equation for this fuel, the fuel contains 84 percent by mass of carbon and 16 percent by mass hydrogen. So, we have to write the stoichiometric air fuel ratio. Stoichiometric air fuel ratio. So, this is the problem. So, this is the problem that we a hydrocarbon fuel is expressed as C x h y, we need to write the stoichiometric air stoichiometric equation for this fuel. So, stoichiometric equation for this fuel and then the fuel contains 84 percent by mass of carbon and 16 percent by mass of hydrogen by, by, by mass of hydrogen, then we have to write the stoichiometric air fuel ratio. So, C x h y plus O 2 will get x C O 2 plus y by 2 H 2 Then we write x plus y by 4 O 2. So, this is the stoichiometric equation. Now, carbon carbon that is C plus O 2 will be converted to CO2 that is mass ratio that is 12 plus 32 and it will be equal to 44. Hence, 0 0.84 kg of carbon needs 32 by 12 into 0 0.84 that 2.24 kg of oxygen. Similarly, if we write the reaction for the hydrogen, that is H 2 plus O 2 that is twice H 2 O. Mass ratio that is 4 plus 32 and that is 36. Hence, 0 0.16 kg of hydrogen needs 32 by 4 into 0 0.16 that is 1.28 kg of oxygen. So, we have calculated the amount of oxygen required for the hydrogen and carbon. Therefore, total oxygen needed 
equal to 3.52 kg. If we add this two, therefore, the total air required. This oxygen will come from the air, so the total air required will be 3.52 divided by 23, 23 percent. I mean, if we consider that uh, oxygen is present, you know, air that is into 100 percent and that is 50.1. Therefore, so the air fuel ratio equal to 15.1. So, this is the 15.1 is the air fuel ratio. That means, to burn per kg of fuel amount of oxygen required and that amount of oxygen will come from how much amount of air and that is what we have calculated the air fuel ratio. So, to summarize today's lecture, we have solved a few problems starting from the carburation, then you know that uh, engine performance, then we have worked out one example on the CI engine combustion and finally, we have solved one numerical problem on the air fuel ratio. And from this worked out example, we have understood that uh, what are the different you know I mean when you would like to solve a particular problem, we need to know how can we solve the problem and for that sometimes we need to recall the definition of a particular term and for this particular case again you need to recall the amount of I mean chemical reaction which is required and the different steps that is required to solve a particular problem that we have understood during the solution of different problems that we have done today. So, with this I stop my lecture today and from next class onward my colleague Professor Vinaya Kulkarni will continue the gas turbine part. Thank you very much.